What is up guys and I do hope you're well and today we're back with some malicious compliance. If you are new here please consider hitting that like, that subscribe button and maybe even that notification bell. As honestly guys I can't express how much it helps when you do these things it really does mean a lot and I know you guys already do so much for me already so I can't ask for too much more but if you do do those things thank you so so much. And with that being said let's get started. First we have a story from Megan Lizard. Don't leave customers in the middle of their orders whilst you black out. I worked in McDonald's for a little over two years and the store location is near a stadium. So whenever there are events on, such as football, rugby, boxing, concerts, we get busy. Now working in a fast food chain, it gets warm quickly. And when it's crowded and warm, I get stressed. I have a tendency to end up blacking out. So this particular day, there was a football match on and the store is getting busy. There are a lot of customers and a lot of staff. We're serving customers and getting orders sorted fairly quickly. I'm in the middle of serving a customer when I can feel myself starting to black out. So I turned to the floor manager and I told her what's happening and if it was okay to go and get a drink. She said yeah and took over serving the customer from me. As I'm having a drink, I'm stood behind the ice cream machine because we aren't allowed to drink in front of the customers when the shift manager, C, comes over and tells me not to leave the customer mid-order. So I go back to taking orders and serving customers when I feel myself blacking out again. Don't leave customers when you're serving them, I think to myself. Okay, and I proceed to pass out. I am now lay on the floor causing more issues than if I'd just gotten a drink again. There are about four managers including the main boss all trying to help me. I can hear a customer trying to tell them what to do too. When I come back around, I'm escorted through the kitchen with a manager and to the crew room and I'm told to go home early, leaving them more understaffed and struggling. Wow. <laughs> I love the fact that you just sort of went, F it, I'm going to pass out right here then. <laughs> Next we have a story from Autumn Haley J. Don't believe in motion sickness? Fine. I'll make you believe. You can see where this one's going immediately. <laughs> First time posting on the sub and on my mobile, so I apologise in advance for any errors, formatting or otherwise. Backstory, so my dad and I have never had a great relationship. It's gotten better in the years I've been out of the house. I'm 24 now, moved out at 18. I'm on a family vacation and an event today reminded me of this. On to the malicious compliance. I was probably about 11 years old and my family was driving to Montana from Minnesota. I have a history of motion sickness, as does my mum, and we've been winding our way through the mountain roads. I was getting pretty ill and said so. Dad responds that motion sickness isn't a thing and that's just in my head. Um, okay. Well I definitely know I'm going to throw up soon, but I just keep my mouth shut. Eventually we stop at McDonald's and grab some food to go. He hands me a cheeseburger and tells me to eat it. I tell him that I'm really sick and will absolutely vomit if I eat it. He again says it's just in my head and if I eat it I'll feel better. I know that this isn't true. As I mentioned above, I'm well acquainted with motion sickness. 11 year old me knows what will happen if I eat that damn burger. So what do I do? I take a big bite out of it. And before I even finish chewing, I vomit all over the back of his seat. Guess who believes in motion sickness now? <laughs> and there's nothing worse than a long, hot journey with a car smelling of puke. <laughs> Grim. Next we have a story from Pearl's Handmaid. Keep everything where I put it. Or how Dory caused a grown woman to lose it. On mobile, have mercy. Happened a few months ago, lots of background but it's worth it. Background, I work as a child worker at my church. Overall, I absolutely love it. All the kids are awesome and super fun to play with. Unfortunately, my old supervisor had a family emergency in another state, so Amy came to take their role. After every use of the kids room, we need to wipe down the toys and put everything away so everything is ready for the next use. Usually this would just involve putting all the toys on the shelves, picking up all the crumbs from snack time and washing blankets. Amy decided this was not enough. She reorganized the entire room, the to-do list to finish up tripled. Now it was, make sure all the toys are on the shelf, make sure all the books are alphabetized. Yes, really. Unplug all electrical devices, scrub the walls, sweep the carpet, vacuum the carpet, and about 12 other very specific but unimportant things. The most important rule, for this story anyway, was every single item must be put on the exact spot. All this made what was supposed to be a 15 minute endeavour into a 40 minute one. Needless to say, we did not particularly like her. 
I'm 200% sure Amy had eagle-eyed memorized where all the 50 plus pieces in the room was to the centimeter. Even after my coworkers and I did everything correct, if the rocking chair was too close to the wall, she would yell at us to move it literally two inches further up. Kid moved the toy kitchen while playing with it, Amy would act as the kid threw it against the wall to us. After a month of us not telepathically knowing exactly where to put everything in Amy's perfect world, Amy pulled me and three co-workers aside and pretty much moved every individual toy and furniture into a correct place for it. She gave us a list of how far apart everything was. The rocking chair is five inches away from the wall. The chairs are eight inches apart from each other, etc. And at the end of her charade, Amy said, keep everything exactly as you found it, as in where I put it, and left us to deal with the kids. However, as she left, she brushed up against the shelf with the stuffed animals on it, and a lone stuffed dory from Finding Nemo fell off and rolled into the center of the room. She looked it in the hallway and rolled her eyes. Make sure to listen to me for once. Malicious compliance begins. One of my co-workers went to pick it up, but I stopped them. Remember what she said? Leave everything where she put it. My co-workers instantly get my idea. The kids come and go. And we spent an entire hour making sure everything is perfect. My co-worker finds a ruler and personally got on the floor to measure the exact distance as instructed. I wiped the same spot in the wall four times and organized the books so they were perfectly straight. In the middle of it all, Dory sat patiently. Amy comes to do a routine check. We stand behind her, triumphant in our thoroughness. Fellow Redditors, I sincerely wish that you were there to witness the anger of Amy that fine day. She screamed about how stupid and lazy we were, sneered at how foolish us ignorant Christians were, that we could forget to pick up a stupid toy on the trucking floor. She cried to our saviour about how we were so sinful as to not to listen to our elders' instructions. After her rant, I looked her dead in the eyes. Miss Amy, you put Dory there. We put it exactly where you found it. Amy realises what she has done. She told me quietly but stern to pick the darn thing up. I obey my elder. We are free to leave. I never saw Amy again. Luckily this event considered with my old supervisor returning from their trip. Amy got in trouble with a head pastor for yelling at us and foul language. Last I heard, she moved to a different church. Peace returned to our children church that day. <laughs> wow, I like to actually measure things to the centimetre or the inch or whatever. That is just... That's some sort of OCD, isn't it, really? That's, that's some sort of mental thing. <laughs> Next, we have a story from Vamp Archer. You want me to burn all my time doing tasks I'm not supposed to instead of my work? Sure. Background. I'm trying to get out of the store I'm working at. We don't really have stockers. Well, we do, but they get almost no hours and they make the sales floor associates do all their work instead of pay people to actually do the work. So almost every truck day, they grab me to help. It's very unfair to me, as I'm almost guaranteed to get picked every single time, but if there's anyone else there, they won't ask them to do it. I've tried to resolve the issue, but they have made it clear they don't want to fix our problems and just want to use me as a crutch for their shortcomings, then be nasty to me about it, which is why I feel semi-justified being an arsehole. I came in, and we had a truck. We had a new manager which we call Kate, who is very unpopular. She is very green and doesn't understand how things work. A lot of the tasks she asks us to do don't make any sense or has impossible expectations in terms of how long certain tasks take. Kate came to me and she told me that there are three carts full of merchandise on the floor and she wants me to set a new mods, strip the aisle bare, put all the new labels up, put everything in correct order and work the new products out of the back. We're not supposed to set new mods on weekends because there is so much going on and we can't just stop halfway through. So we have always been told never to do them. I asked why we we're doing this on the weekend and she told me just to do it anyway. I wasn't one to argue because she was polite about it and I had absolutely nothing to do anyways. It's actually kind of fun. It was like a mini vacation from my usual activities, but I knew there would be a shitstorm coming. Sure enough, they tell me I need to help work the truck because they're either too lazy or too incompetent to do it themselves like every truck day. I deadpan told the supervisor to ask Kate because I can't just stop. I have to finish it before I do anything else, not to mention I had at least 15 huge boxes, trash everywhere and loads of overstock. They looked at the mountain of trash and boxes that Kate told them just to leave for me and they left me alone. All stuff we're not allowed to do on the weekends for that very reason. Once I finished a good three hours later, Kate told us to work the back room. They just did that literally yesterday, but she insisted we need to do it again despite her knowing that. Again, I had nothing to do and I didn't want to go to work pallets, so I just went along with it. I went to the back there and spent two hours with my co-worker pulling out stuff 
that we fully knew would not go out, push it back, chatting amongst ourselves, repeat. Then once it hit my lunchtime, I left. But once I came back, the night manager was fuming. He asked why I didn't help with the truck, because apparently it's that hard to pass a memo along. The supervisor was still there and could have told him, but she just didn't say anything. I just told him exactly what they told me to do and went on with my business. I wasn't getting in trouble for what I was told to do, especially by my direct boss, and I left a note behind detailing exactly what I was instructed to do if they give me shit tomorrow. Good, organised management is so hard to find. You often find that with a lot of like, especially store chains and stuff now, there's like too many managers who don't communicate amongst themselves, and then there's always the people sort of below them who always get the shit thrown at them. It's ridiculous, it really is. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Malicious Compliance. As I said at the start, your support really means everything to this channel. Without it, I wouldn't be here today. So you throwing those likes, those shares, everything that you do for me, I really appreciate. Thank you so much guys. Take care now. Goodbye.